In this box right here is my brand new camshaft for the engine. Now this is a performance camshaft. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be putting the pistons in the Chevy 350. Now the last video where we left off, I had broken one of the pistons and I'm still waiting for the new one to get here. But instead of wasting time, I figured I can put the other seven pistons into the engine. And once we get the eighth piston in, then we can easily assemble that one and pop it into the engine without too much time wasted. So as you can see here, I actually already have one of the pistons fitted and I put that one in ahead of time because I wanted to avoid a mistake like last video. I didn't want to accidentally do something majorly wrong And so I tested the whole process before I filmed anything and we got one in there already So I'm gonna pretty much explain step by step how to put the rings in the pistons How to use the piston ring compressor and then also how to pop them in the engine The process is relatively simple, but it is a little bit delicate So you're gonna need a couple things for this first thing you'll need is obviously a clean and ready to assemble piston Now we only have seven of these because like I said in the last video, we broke one of them. Second thing you're gonna need is one of these cheap piston ring compressors. They're really easy to get on Amazon. It was maybe only about 20 bucks and is an absolute necessity for putting pistons into a block. Additionally, you're also going to need a torque wrench uh, because all of the bolts on the caps have to be torqued to a certain amount. Then you're also going to need some assembly lube and about a quart of whatever type of oil is going to end up being in the engine when you run it. So in this case, we have a 10W30 because that's what I'm going to fill the engine with once it's actually ready to run. One thing I actually forgot is this tool. This is a piston ring expander. So you put the piston in and you squeeze it and it opens it up so you can get it over the top of the piston. This tool is also very crucial crucial for this project. Now you guys are looking at the workbench and I've got four different bags of piston rings right here fresh out of the box. I also have the piston that we're going to be working on right here. So what you want to start with is one of these oil rings. The oil rings are kind of this uh, wavy, wiggly looking metal piece and that is the first one that we're going to put on. So what you're gonna do is find where your oil ring breaks and mine is right here. There's a little space in it. Put one side of it in your ring expander the other side and the other. And so when you squeeze, it'll open it up like that. Now what you're gonna do is just slowly slide it over the piston. Once it's down most of the way, go ahead and pop it into place and there you go. Super, super easy. That one goes in pretty much easy all the time. Next up, you're gonna need two of the oil spacer rings and these go on either side of the oil ring that first went on. Now these don't have a marked top or bottom, but some of them do. So always make sure to either look for a little dimple or even the word top inscribed in it. So for these, what you do is actually kind of a spiral approach. So you're gonna take half of it and pop it down into place. This does take a little bit of finagling to get totally right, but then you're just gonna kind of peel the edge down all the way around in the spiral motion and eventually it just pops in and there you go. And that's what it looks like with one oil ring and the spacer on there. I'll get a bit, little bit closer for this next one so you guys can see it better. We pop that down on the top side and then just slowly spiral it around until it snaps in. And there we go. Next, you're gonna need the second groove ring. And this one is actually marked for top and bottom. So we're gonna put it in the proper way up. Again, put it into your ring expander, open her up, and we're just gonna slide it over the top here. And wha-bam, there we go. Now these rings are already properly spaced for the pistons that they're going on, so you don't need to file them down, but some piston rings require you to do certain clearances in order to get them to fit. And then the final ring to install is this top one, which is very similar to the second one, so don't get them mixed up. And there you go, all of your piston rings are installed. Now something that's really important to keep track of is the fact that piston rings actually have a set orientation. So I'm gonna give you the easy trick right here. When you're looking at it from the top, this notch here indicates the front of the engine. So what you want is the ring on top has its space directly on the top at the 12 o'clock position. The second ring will have its gap at the six o'clock position right at the bottom here. And then the two little rings, the oil spacer rings here, have their gaps at like the, if you're looking at it again from this side, have the gaps at like five and seven. 
So now that our piston rings are all set and aligned properly, what we're gonna do is clamp them down using this tool. Now you wanna start it nice and big to get over the entire piston. Then you're gonna grab your tightening rod and just slowly crank it down. And you wanna get it just about as tight as it'll let you go. Then what we're gonna do is pour a little of this oil down into the cylinder bore. And then I just take a piece of paper towel and slide it around in there, make sure it gets all oiled up in there. So then you're gonna take your end cap off from the piston and you're gonna wanna make sure that your crankshaft is aligned with the bottom of the cylinder board. When you look straight down the center, you wanna see crankshaft bearing right there. And since we don't see that, I'm just gonna push this back slightly. And now you can see it straight through there. Also, always remember to put some assembly lube on these bearings before seating them on the crankshaft. So now we're gonna put our piston in. Make sure that the forward orientation is facing forward and we're just gonna slide it in there. It's gonna take maybe a little finagling to get it in there. There we go. And then make sure your piston clamp is seated flat. I like to use the uh, handle end of a rubber mallet and just kinda All right, that one took a little bit of extra effort because the clamp that I have for the piston rings kept slipping loose and they were catching on the outside and weren't going in, but we did eventually get it. Now that it's wrapped around the, uh, the crankshaft on the back, make sure to put some assembly lube on the other side of this cap and then we'll just connect it up on the back. Then what I like to do is immediately flip the engine over and I'll tighten down or just snug down these uh, bolts here. We are now on the final piston here. It has taken me a very long time to get all these together. And I say final as in the final one that we actually have available to put in right now. That eighth one is still in shipping right now. And now I'm just gonna run through and torque all of these bolts to make sure they're at the right setting. We got all of the pistons in except that eighth one that's still on its way, but doesn't this look awesome? They're all fitting in there real nice. On this side, you have the two, four, six, eight cylinders. And on this side, you have the one, three, five, seven. All of the pistons and the rods matched up really nicely. It turns over with about 30 pounds of pressure, which is pretty close to what it should be. And given the fact that there's not really any oil in here, that's definitely gonna pass for now. So the next thing on our list is to put the camshaft in. And this is gonna be a real interesting process, but hopefully it goes smoothly. In this box right here is my brand new cam camshaft for the engine. Now this is a performance camshaft. It will be going along with the performance lifters, rockers, and intake that we're doing here. But this is going to be the first real upgrade to this thing. So all we really have to do with this camshaft is cover it in assembly lube and then shove it in. Now this side is the first side that goes in and then it should go smoothly through all of those cam bearings that we just put in. Fingers crossed that this part goes as smoothly as I expect it to. I'm gonna lube up about 50% of it right off the bat here. Really, really get it on there. Make sure it's all over these bearings. You will get very dirty rebuilding an engine, I have learned very quickly. There is no way to truly avoid it. We got half of it lubed up, we're gonna shove it in. Here we go. Oh, it fits through the first cam bearing, that's a good sign. Going in, going through, about to hit the next bearing. Oh, slid through. Oh, second one, nice and good. Keep going here. Oh, felt the third one. There we go. Don't roll away on me now, engine, bad time. Got it halfway in, it'll lube up the rest now. I look like I killed somebody. Look at all this 
red goo on my hands. It's like blood. Stop running away from me, engine. I need you. All right, let's continue. Third one in. Oh, feel the fourth one. There we go. And we get it all the way in. There we go. And we're in. The camshaft's in. Oh my God, and does it move? Do it move, oh, hold on. I need, I need something to give me more leverage. It does, it spins. We have camshaft motion. Oh my God, is that awesome. We got the pistons in and the camshaft in all in one day. This, this is, this is big, this is big. We're so close to having this thing finished. So here's the deal. Now that the pistons are in and the camshaft is in, the only things we have to do left are the lifters, the heads, which are pretty much already pre-built, the rods that connect to the lifters, and then slap the oil pan and the oil pickup on, and it's done. Obviously some fine tweaking and tuning and things of that sort need to be done, but all of the major components are pretty much here. All I'm waiting on is the, the eighth piston and the oil pickup, and then we can finish the assembly of this thing, which means within a couple days, we might be able to see this thing run for the first time. The next video, we're gonna be making a huge amount of progress, I promise you, because all the final things are sliding in, basically bolt-on features. There's very little actual technical work to do from here on out. I am super excited by the progress that we got done today, and I'm super, super happy, especially that everything fit with no major catastrophes this time. So if you want to see more, make sure that you subscribe to this channel because I am going to be running this engine super soon. It's going in this 1975 Camaro that we're rebuilding. So make sure you stick along for the whole process. This is going to be a huge moment in this channel's history and quite frankly in my history because I've never rebuilt an engine before. So if this thing works, it'll be a miracle.